Hello and welcome. In this video series, we will learn about vehicle to everything communication, also known as V2X communication. I am Tamur. I have a PhD in radio systems and over 10 years of experience from automotive and telecom industry. We begin with an overview of V2X communication. We will initially develop some basic understanding and slowly we go deep into the specific topics and touch upon the details as we get there. Imagine a typical urban environment with several road users, vehicles, road infrastructure, buildings, and cellular network coverage. All the vehicles in this scenario may or may not have the capability or the modems to communicate wirelessly. Having the V2X mod modules installed Vehicles will communicate with each other over the wireless link directly or via cellular network to inform each other about their location, speed, heading direction, and any relevant warnings for collision mitigation. When vehicles are communicating to other vehicles, to the infrastructure, to the pedestrians, or to the mobile network, we call it vehicle to everything or V2X communication. V2X communication is a complete road safety and traffic efficiency solution that allows vehicles to communicate with its surrounding objects. Before we discuss the technical details of V2X communication, it is important to know the commonly used terminologies. When we say a vehicle, we mean any motorized vehicle including cars, buses, trucks, ambulances, and motorbikes. Similarly, when we say pedestrian in general terms, we refer to vulnerable road users that include pedestrian, cyclist, scooter rider, elderly, disabled, and so forth. With the infrastructure, we mean smart traffic lights, road signs, and V2X roadside units. And finally, mobile network can be 4G 5G or beyond that, any of these cellular networks. In the connectivity landscape, for the short range communication, vehicles and other road users often use direct communication between each other in an ad hoc manner, whereas for the long range communication or Internet of Things application, they rely on 4G and 5G cellular networks. Ad hoc V2X communication also known as side link or PC5, is a short range and direct communication. It is for the distances under one kilometer. There are different technology alternatives available for short range communication. For example, based on the Wi-Fi standard IEEE 802.11p or cellular standard named CV2X side link or PC5. The long-range V2X communication is for the distances over 1 km. V2X communication over cellular network uses UJU interface, which is commonly used in our mobile phones. Cellular networks bring additional benefits for V2X communication. That includes mobile edge com computing support. Quality of service can also be guaranteed using the mobile networks. Internet of Things application could also be supported to connect vehicles to smart homes and automated park parking systems. And the standard used for uh, such an IoT applications is a narrowband IoT or LTEM. Moreover, enhanced and trusted authentication can be ensured using the cellular networks. Speaking of V2X standards worldwide, there is no global V2X communication standard to enable V2X applications worldwide. Each region has their own variant of the standard. For example, in the US, on the access layer, there is IEEE 802.11p based DSRC, and the other choice is 3GPP based cellular V2X while the protocol stack is called WAVE. In the EU, on the access layer, it is the same as in the US, 
but the protocol stack is called ITS G5. Please mind it is G5, not the same as 5G. In China, access layer will be choosing cellular V2X while they have their own protocol stack. In Japan, they have ARIB standard, which is based on US WAVE and DSRC standards. Each region has specified its own protocol stack and its own choice for the access technology. But cellular V2X is common among all for the access layer part. Here, you must be wondering if you're not familiar with OSI layers that what do I mean with the access layer or the protocol stack? So in the upcoming videos, I will be explaining what do I mean with access layer and the protocol stack, and I will be explaining the differences in the V2X communication. In the next videos, I will be explaining more about V2X. For example, why do we need V2X communication? What are the use cases and the application? How does V2X plays a role toward autonomous drive? What are the differences in regional V2X standards, protocol stack for each region, and their comparison, a comprehensive frequency band analysis, cellular V2X, V2X system architecture, and a lot more so that you can get a complete overview of V2X technology and learn the details. Hopefully you have enjoyed watching this overview of V2X communication. To follow all the videos on V2X, visit this playlist. To watch the latest video, you may press the link here and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to be notified as soon as a new video is uploaded, press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.